It's always a wonderful thing to enjoy church, isn't it? Yes. Amen. To be more glad that you came than if you'd have stayed home. Yes. Amen. Well, yesterday was the best prayer meeting that I have personally ever been in. From the moment that I stepped into that platform, I could feel just the pulsating presence of God. And I don't know why God just won't do that all the time, you know, but it's an amazing experience when a human being is able to step over into the Shekinah presence of the Lord. There's just something that happens that you cannot define, cannot explain. And so, uh, well, today is, uh, I've been on this detox thing, and today is 27 days without coffee tea, caffeine, so I can't promise how nice I'm going to be. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> no, I, I actually, um, I've been really looking forward to preaching today because um, what I want to preach to you, God really just downloaded in my spirit in about 45 minutes, and I'd never seen it before. And I, I want to talk about the garments of God um, and I have a lot of material to cover, and I need the Holy Ghost to really help me here. But um, Psalms 104 and 2 says this, that God covers himself with light as a garment. He literally robes himself with light as a garment. In Daniel chapter 7 and verse 9, when Daniel is having a vision of God, he said, the ancient of days garment was white as snow. And this is why when you hear people that have had uh, death experiences, the number one thing that is generally always recounted by people who die and then come back is almost invariably they will say, I saw an intense blinding light. They will even say, I could not make out the form. I just saw this amazing light and I could feel such love. That's because God is clothed. His garment on him is light. And so he is, he, he, no wonder no man has seen God at any time because you, you can't get through the light. There is such a purity of the Lord. I remember years ago, it's the only time that ever happened to me. I woke up in the middle of the night and I had, I had had a dream or a vision that I had seen Jesus. And, uh, when I saw him, all I could say was, oh, the purity. Oh, the purity of your Lord. Oh, the purity. It was like there was a translucent and a transparency that he was so pure and the light of God was there so powerful. So God is light. And when you see God, that's what you see. And no wonder the Bible says in Revelations that God, there will be no need for some kind of artificial light because the Lamb, hallelujah, will light up heaven. That the light that we will enjoy will emanate from heaven. And so, of course, God, when he decides to make Adam, in fact, let me, let me back up here for a moment. Because the highest of, of creative beings that we can find in the scripture that God made was Lucifer. Now, you got to put out of your mind for a minute that he became the devil. People always say this, why did God make the devil? God didn't make the devil. He created Lucifer. Rebellion created the devil. So God didn't make evil. Evil came out of choice, of rebelling against God. And so Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14 are really, really the only two passages of Scripture that give us some insight as to the origin of Lucifer. And, of course, the Scripture talks about him that he was a morning star. 
that he led the sons of God in praise. He was above the seraphims and the cherubims, and he was above the archangels, and he literally lived in the presence of the Lord. He stood in the throne room of God, and he led worship. So his name means light bearer. When God created Lucifer, he clothed him with himself. And Lucifer became a bearer of light. And so now he is in the presence of the Lord and he has this garment of light on him. And somewhere in the process, I don't know what happened to him, but he makes this choice that he is going to ascend above God. The Bible then says that when he does, that God casts him out of heaven. When he casts him out of heaven, the first thing that God did was he stripped him of his garment of light. And the darkness isn't an entity, it is the absence of light. And God, when he, when he removes Lucifer, the light bearer, from his presence, he literally stripped him of the godness that was on him. And now all you have is darkness. No wonder the Bible says, Jesus, in one, in one verse it says that God cast him out of heaven. And I think it's in Isaiah said, he cast him down to the sides of hell. So then when you read the scripture that talks about it, it says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was out form, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. What was that? That was a light bearer that had been stripped of the glory of God, and the devil is on the earth, but the reason darkness pervades upon it, and the word darkness means sorrow, misery, destruction, all of these horrible things, and you have the enemy in the earth, and darkness is as everywhere. No wonder the first saint God says when he recreates the earth, he says, let let there be light. Why? Because he has to overpower the enemy that used to bear the light of the gospel of God. You ever notice somebody who used to be on fire for God, full of the Holy Ghost, and then somehow they mess up and they quit serving the Lord? They become dark. There is no residue of who they used to be. I grew up as a boy seeing a pastor that pastored the church that my dad took after him that went back into alcoholism. And he, we would, I would watch him as a boy walk down the streets of that Indian reservation so drunk he could not hardly walk. There was no residue of light in him. Where there is no light, there is darkness. No wonder there's so much darkness in the earth right now is because we have tried to tell the light bearer, go away and don't be here. So God strips him. And yet, 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen says this about the devil. He has disguised himself as an angel of light. A disguise is not who you are. It's what you want people to think you are. Of all the things that Lucifer could have portrayed himself as, he is portraying himself as an angel of light. Why? Because he wants what he lost. He wants back the position that he had with God, and yet he can never get back. This doctrine that the devil is going to be saved along with everybody else is not true. There is no hope for the devil. And I will be the first one to throw the switch and fire his behind in hell if I can do it because of all of the pain that he has inflicted on the people of the Lord. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. And so now you have the light bearer that has been removed from the presence of the Lord or he has no longer a garment of God. He is in the earth. And now light is in the earth. God has turned the light on. The enemy must have been miserable at this point. So what does God do? The Bible says that God creates Adam. And one verse says this after God created Adam, that he was naked, but he didn't know he was naked. Why? Because God did the same thing with Adam that he did with Lucifer. He clothed him. He put a garment on Adam of light. This is why Adam didn't know he was naked. Because in all senses, he wasn't. Because he was walking around with the covering. The garment, hallelujah, the garment everywhere he went. When the animals looked at Adam, they could just see the glory of God. That's why a gorilla didn't tear him apart. That's why a snake couldn't bite him was because he could not penetrate the light of the gospel of God. This is why the enemy still has not won in this hour. It's because the Bible says there shall be light in the evening time. Does not matter how dark it is, you turn on just a little 10-watt bulb and you can see it from a mile off because just a little bit of light will make darkness begin to flee. Can I tell you, hallelujah, it don't matter how weak it may be in this hour, God still got a church that shall be a light in the evening time. So God, he covers Adam. He puts his garment on him. And now we have the same repeat with Adam as we did with Lucifer. And he rebels against the word of the Lord, him and his wife Eve. The moment that they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, God strips them of their garment of light. How do we know this? Is because the Bible said they looked at themselves and they said, we're naked. They had never made that assumption before because when they looked at themselves, they saw a reflection of God. They were covered, hallelujah, with the light of God, the garment of God. When sin came into them, God stripped them of The garment that he had given them, and Adam's, God says, where are you? And he says, I hid myself because I'm afraid, for I was naked. So as you can watch, God wears a garment of light. Lucifer had a garment of light to the fact that his name bore it out. He is a light bearer. Adam, hallelujah, has a garment of light which was the very nature of God. It literally covered the physical person of what God had created. And everywhere they went, hallelujah, they reflected. No wonder God, when he talks about the church, he says, you are the light of the world. Light is not just the ability to see in the natural. Light is the very essence of who God is. When the sun rises in the morning, it's declaring the existence of God. When the moon rises at midnight, it is a reflection of the glory of God. What the light is, hallelujah, there it declares God is light. So this garment that God gives men, creation, is amazing. No wonder the Bible says in John 3, 19, it says, 
evil men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil, because they have the nature of Satan. And Satan lives in darkness. And so now you have 4,000 years that God does not have a creation that bears his image without sin. So now we fast forward into the New Testament. And the scripture says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I think it's in John 1, it says, this is the first chapter, it says, God manifested himself or he revealed himself in the flesh. So God creates Jesus Christ. The word becomes flesh and dwells among us. When Jesus is born, he has to have a garment from God. And the scripture says that when Jesus was born, that his mother wrapped him in a garment of linen, which was grave clothes, because his purpose in the earth was to die. And so he is born with a garment that will enable him to accomplish the prophetic purpose of God upon his life. When he reaches the age of 30, he is given another garment. We know this is because the Bible says that it was seamless and that at crucifixion, the men, the soldiers valued that and that they gambled for that garment. When Jesus is 30 years old, he is walking, hallelujah, as a priest and not as a king. In the Old Testament, the only way that priests, the high priest, because the scripture says that Jesus is our high priest and he is touched with the feeling of our infirmities. So the only way that the high priest in the Old Testament could come into the holiest of holies was they had to have a garment change. They had to take off the ephod and, and all of the breastplate and all of that and they walked into the holiest of holies with linen on. When, and I'm, tr I'm trying not to get ahead of myself here because I got some good stuff. When Jesus, hallelujah, at the age of 30, has this garment, what he is walking in, he's walking in priesthood, but he's also walking with authority. No wonder the Bible said if they could just touch the hem of his garment, they could be made whole. They recognized that there was a garment on Jesus, hallelujah, that represented it an, a divine authority of the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, when you go a little bit farther, when Jesus is getting ready to be crucified, the Bible says that they take Christ and the soldiers and inherits Pilate and Pilate. What did they do? The scripture says they stripped him of his kingly robe or of his priestly robe. This had to happen. Because what they don't know is what they are doing is prophetic. They took a kingly robe and they put it on Jesus. Now they're mocking him and they think they're degrading him. But what they are declaring is uh, this is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Can I tell you, it doesn't matter how bad it looks. It doesn't matter how successful the enemy looks. That which is intended for evil, God will turn around for good. When the enemy cometh in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will turn it against them. It doesn't matter what. 
what it looks like. Even in the midst of the enemy's interference, God will say, I'm going to turn this around and I'm going to use it for the glory of God. Because of what they were declaring, and Jesus had to have this garment in order to accomplish his purpose, because he's coming back as king of the Jews. And he's coming in through the eastern gate that has been walled up for all of these thousands of years. So here Jesus is standing. He's had on his robe of ministry, his garment of ministry. But for him to fulfill the next purpose, he has to be stripped of that one. The enemy puts on him a kingly robe. And they mockingly worship him and say, hail to the king of the Jews. But Jesus cannot die as a king. He has to die as a high priest, because in the Old Testament, it was the high priest who offered the sacrifice for the sins of the nation. So the Lord this time is not, hallelujah, going to offer a sacrifice. He is going to be the sacrifice. So they have to take off of him, hallelujah, the kingly robe. They put back on him his priesthood robe. And Jesus, hallelujah, is is crucified as the high priest being offered up unto the Lord Jesus Christ. When he dies... He is now getting ready to come into the holiest of holies in heaven and offer the blood for mankind, his own blood. What happens? He has lost, hallelujah, his priestly robe that he is killed in. And Joseph comes in, takes Jesus, and wraps him in linen puts a garment of linen on him and puts him in the tomb. While he is in that tomb for three days, he comes out of the tomb in the spirit and he is resurrected. And the Bible said he ascended up into heaven, went into the holiest of holies with linen, hallelujah, and put down the sacrifice that forever, once and for all, washes away our sins and makes us whole by the power of God. You talk about the power of a garment. God wants to make sure that you and I are covered. This is just not a story. Everything in it is tied to the eternal purpose of God. There is a reason why things happen in the scriptures. We only know in part and we only see in part. When Jesus was in the earth, eight, John 8 and 12, he said, I am the light of the world. Hallelujah. So now you have Jesus ascending up into glory, and he tells his disciples he says, I need you to go to Jerusalem and tarry till you be endued with power from on high. What was he telling them? He said, you're getting ready to walk in your new purpose, and you're going to have to have a different garment on than you got right now. The word endued with power literally means to be clothed with what God was saying, go to Jerusalem and wait on me because you're getting ready to get a garment change for you to accomplish the purpose of God. Listen, garments are tied to purpose. Go back to the Old Testament. <clears throat> Joseph is going to rule and reign. 
So what happens? His daddy gives him a garment of many colors that represents he is special and that there is a double portion of the Father upon him. When the enemy is going to deal with him, but it's in the process of God because he is anointed by God to be a ruler and a deliverer, but his character has not yet caught up with his calling and with his purpose. There has to be suffering. So his brothers strip him, hallelujah, of his coat of many colors, and they allow him to be covered with another robe that causes him to go into suffering. He then placed in Potiphar's house. Potiphar gives him another garment where he rules. When he gets ready to go into prison, what happens? The woman comes after him, gives all exact accusation against him. What has to happen? The Bible said he fled the room and he left his garment in her hands. What happened? It's because he couldn't wear the garment that Potiphar forgave him to rule and reign in the prison. He had to have on prison garb. So when he went to prison, he was given a different garb. But can I tell you that when it came time for him to walk in his eternal purpose, the Bible said when the king called for him, the first thing that he did was gave him a garment change because you can't rule in Israel or in Egypt if you don't have the king's garment on. Can I tell my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. There is a garment change getting ready to happen in the atmosphere. And God's going to take off of your spirit of heaviness and put on you a garment of praise. So God... On the day of Pentecost, he lights up the room because the Bible says fire showed up. What's the scripture say? Our God is a consuming fire. You want to light up the night? Build a fire. Hallelujah. That might be the problem with the church is we let the fire go out. Losing your covering, and this is what happened to Adam. He was naked. There is a parallel in the natural or in the spirit realm that parallels in the natural, especially in this nation, but in other nations too. The less covering you have in the spirit, the less of the garment of God that covers you, the more naked you are. Say, well, I don't know about that. Then go back to Revelations and read about Laodicea. The Lord said this. He said, you are naked because you are lukewarm. And he said, you don't even know you're naked. He said, I counsel thee to get a garment, hallelujah, and cover yourself in righteousness. <clears throat> we live in a society, you go to any mall or just get out. Most, a good percentage of the women in America are uncovered. It is an embarrassment at how little clothes <clears throat> people wear in malls, airports. I, I see people, I'm thinking, you don't have a mirror in your house. <clears throat> I mean, shorts that are so high up here, their backsides hanging out. Little tiny halter tops with nothing underneath of it, and they're walking around like that. But can I tell you, as the church goes, so goes the nation. And if the church got naked, <clears throat> then it's going to manifest in the natural realm. <clears throat> got somebody backing me up there. I knew that was a sister. 
Sis nobody can say, well, like a sister. <clears throat> Hallelujah, I love you. <laughs> so God, he now takes the church and he puts a garment of light on her. History says that in two years, the entire known world at that time was evangelized with a revival, hallelujah, because of the garment that God, hallelujah, put on the church. And so, understanding <clears throat> How, what garments mean is so imperative because starting with myself over the years, we have little success many times in trying to have spiritual victories <clears throat> because we have the wrong garment on. You have to understand that everything that God has us do requires garments. Romans chapter 13 and verse 14 talks about this. It says, first of all, and this is as you become a believer, he says this, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. When you get saved, <clears throat> you put on. That's what, the, that's what Jesus did. He put on the garment of his father. That's why he said, the works that my father do, I can do also. This is why he said, greater works than these shall ye do. Because I go into my father, because he was giving us a garment. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things pass away, all things become new. The biggest problem with the church today, and it's a disservice to so many people, is, <clears throat> and Jesus made this statement. He said, no man, he said, you cannot put a piece of new cloth on an old garment. Because it will rip it. And the new piece will be destroyed and so will the garment. Seeker friendly mentality is we want to do an alteration on the old man, and God is saying that won't work because what we're trying to do is enter into the presence of the Lord with the wrong garment on. And the Lord bears this out. He said there was a wedding, and many were invited to it. And a man comes into the wedding, and the bridegroom comes and says, Sir, where is your wedding garment? <clears throat> He said, cast him out where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There is a prerequisite to get in the presence of the Lord. <clears throat> now, a priest wears a garment, but it's different from what a king wears. And yet, Peter, I believe, said this, you and I are what? Kings and priests. So that means as a believer, you're going to have multiple garments hanging in your spiritual closet. You've got to have the discernment, which one am I supposed to be wearing at the time that I'm trying to accomplish the eternal purpose of God? 
the problem with so many believers because of this prosperity doctrine that's been so perpetrated on the church. As we're just kings, kings, kings. Well, can I tell you the reason most people can't get in the presence of the Lord is because you can't come into the presence of Jesus wearing a king robe. You have to wear a priesthood robe that you are wrapped in linen and you come into the presence of God because there can't be two kings in the room. So then you have all these people trying to get in the presence of God saying, oh, Lord, move, do this. And God's saying, I can't hear you. You got the wrong garment on. It means that you got to get rid. That's what John the Baptist understood. He said, there's one coming after me who is before, before me, uh, hallelujah, who's greater than me. Uh, and he said, I have to decrease uh, and he must increase. Uh, we need to get this king mentality uh, out of the sanctuary and come in here as priests, hallelujah, and lay down our accomplishments uh, and our goals and our talents uh, and say, look at me. Did you read my book? Did you hear my latest CD? Do you know how great I am? God's saying, I don't need a king. I need a man and a woman that has been robed as a priest to minister to the Lord God Almighty. So there's another garment. It's called the garment of praise. The Lord never calls heaviness a garment. He said it's a demon. He said, I will give you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And so... Part of being in the presence of the Lord is you got to learn, hallelujah, to put on the garment of praise. And I don't like people that are just, they're negative all the time. So, how you doing? Well, I'm not doing good. This happened, that's happened, that's happened. I'm thinking, welcome to humanity. <laughs> we all have a story to tell. But it's proven, hallelujah, and we know this. And Nicholas talked about the creative word. You can't get in the presence of a, God doesn't like complainers. Because it is unbelief. Because let's say that, let's say financially you need $10,000. And you really need it bad. And you get the word that there's somebody you know that you love, that they've got a lot of money and they like to bless people. And <clears throat> they want to help you out. Well, the last thing they want is for you to come over there and say, you know, life is so hard. I just, I wish I was dead. And <clears throat> They want to hear, you know what? Thank you. When you come complaining with a spirit of heaviness, you're telling God, I don't think you have the ability to fix this. So will you just sit down with me in my pity and cry with me? The Lord never told the Israelites that I'm going to come down to Egypt and cry with you. <clears throat> he said, I heard your cry. I'm coming down to get you out and to bring you up. <clears throat> Now, you, when you war against the devil, <clears throat> you don't need the garment of praise. You need to put on a different garment. <clears throat> and I think it's in, see which chapter it's in. Romans 13 and 12, it says this, put on, 
the armor of light. When you are in battle with the enemy, <clears throat> you don't need a kingly robe. You don't need a robe of praise. You need to put on the robe, the garment of armor. Ephesians 6. Hallelujah. Put ye on the whole armor of God. Why? Because initially the enemy is going to try to wound you. This is why the Bible says that we're able to stop all the fiery darts of the wicked. That when you confront the enemy and say, okay, big boy, we're coming to a come to Jesus meeting today. And this is going to stop. And he fires this and he fires that. And it just bounces off. Why? Because you got the right garment on. You got on, hallelujah, the armor of light. You've got some authority with that. Listen, armor gives you authority. You are clothed, hallelujah, with the ability of God. Now, all of us want people to be saved. Many of you have children that are not saved. I went through that. But you've got to have on the right garment for intercession. You can't, when, when you come into intercession and you are interceding before God, it isn't praise. It isn't authority. It is, in the Old Testament, when people went into intercession and, and, and to intercede, mourning. What they have, sackcloth. It was a fabric that they put on in order to intercede and to make petition. And in this season, we have so many Christians that can't figure out, God, why are my prayers not being answered concerning my loved ones? <clears throat> it's because it's not just enough to say, Lord, I want to thank you. I want to praise you that they're going to be saved. No, sir. You got to put on a garment that is right for the job. Years ago when I, I used to well, stick well, and it's a nasty job. And you had a, you didn't wear a suit stick welding. You had on a, a leather jacket and you had leather gloves up to here and you had a full helmet and you had on leather boots. Why? Because there was some heat and some sparks involved. I suited up for that. There, it doesn't matter what profession it is. It generally requires a uniform. You can call it a garment. You can call it a uniform. But you have to recognize what do I need to be wearing in order to accomplish what God needs me to accomplish. And there are seasons of praise. There are seasons that we battle the devil with the armor of light. But there are also times that we wrap ourselves. You know what? What uh, it was Hannah was doing before Eli in the temple. The Bible said uh, she was interceding. She was interceding and she wrapped herself in intercession till no words came out of her mouth. There is a thing called silent prayer that it becomes so powerful that you retreat into another realm. And God looks down and says, I see them in the garment of intercession. Hallelujah. And the Lord recognizes that. And it's in that time that you are touching the Lord, that heaven begins to break open for you by the power of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> Second Corinthians 5 and 3 says, if being clothed with our house from heaven, we shall not be found naked. Revelation 16 and 15 says, Blessed is he that watcheth or guardeth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. 
when God <clears throat> created you and me, when you get saved, God gives you an initial garment called the garment of salvation. But with that, hallelujah, there are other changes of garments that he gives you in order to achieve what you need to achieve in your life. <clears throat> when I come into the presence of the Lord, it always overwhelms me to think that the eternal creator would be mindful of me. How many of you ever feel like that? It's just, it's so humbling. So it's not hard for me <clears throat> to just bow before the Lord and say, what a privilege it is to be in your presence. But when you get in there, then God will begin <clears throat> to tell you how you need to be prepared and dressed. You dressed for church today. <clears throat> This is not what you will wear to bed. At least I don't think it will be. <laughs> if in the natural garments are required for purpose, then God already establishes that there has to be garments to achieve prophetic purpose <clears throat> in the Holy Ghost. And every season of your life requires a different garment. God, hallelujah, has clothed us. And I don't know the fullness of what God's doing, but I can tell you this, that there is a garment change we're in the middle of changing right now. And, you know, there, it's called a changing room. And they go in one way and they come out another. And the Lord said this about the devil. He said, there is coming a day that I'm going to undress the devil. And I'm going to make manifest every evil work that has been done. And God, just as he stripped him in heaven, in his final judgment, the Lord is going to strip that weasel. Because Isaiah says this, that when God in judgment strips him of his disguise, that we're going to look and go, no. And he said, you will say, is this the man that made nations tremble? Is this the man that made the earth shake? See, the enemy has put on a disguise with too many of you. And you're looking at it as something that is not real. And what God is trying to help you understand is that you got to be able to look past the enemy and all of these things that you're going through right now. All the stories that you and I can tell of how we've been in the no help, no end. It seemed like it was over and you're sleeping in your car and your dead broke and your house got repossessed and your business is going under and you're in divorce court and you got stage four cancer. But can I tell you that when it looks like it's over God will step in and say okay, that's enough. And he starts undressing, taking off what the enemy put on you. And he says, now honey I'm giving you a garment of blessing. I'm giving you a garment of prosperity. I'm giving you a garment of your children saved. I'm giving you your city. I'm giving you the glory. Do you feel it? By the Spirit of the Lord. That God is releasing something by the Holy Ghost. Stand with me. Hallelujah. 
sometimes God will give you a new garment that you never wore before. He did that to me when I was 39. It was the first time he ever gave me the garment of a prophet. Some of you are getting ready to step over into another realm with God you've never been in before. And God is going to put something brand new on you. I can play the piano a little bit, just enough to embarrass myself. <laughs> but I prophesy all the time, because God's done it many, many times, that the Holy Ghost is going to come on me, and I'm going to play music. Y'all need to step out. Boy, I feel, I feel that today in the spirit. There is a creative atmosphere. Hallelujah. I sense a creative atmosphere. Hallelujah. 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 In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. I, I rebuke the devourer in this sanctuary today. And for those of you that are watching online, I rebuke the devourer in the name of Jesus <clears throat> that has stolen from you. And I'm declaring that he has to give it back with interest seven times in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen, God is doing amazing things. A couple weeks ago, remember the, Terry brought up the little Hispanic lady that was is her housekeeper and she had like five tumors and um, she just standing there crying remember I put my arms around just loved on her <clears throat> she went back to the doctor and she told the doctor I got lumps he checked her I said there are no lumps <laughs> every tumor every tumor gone hallelujah and what, what you and I just prayed together by the Spirit of the Lord. Terry said, how you doing? She said, oh, your pastor prayed for me. I have no more, no more tumors. Can I tell you, it's, it's not us. It's just that we have allowed God to put on this church a garment of the miraculous of the supernatural by the spirit of the lord now i break the spirit of heaviness i bind the demon of heaviness today off of you in the name of jesus you lying devil i cast you out of this sanctuary in the name of the lord and i declare truth 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 shall prevail and god will begin to release in your spirit today by the power of god the holy ghost anointing that you will hear what the spirit of the lord is saying to the church my prayer partners come on i want to challenge you this week ask god what garment do i need to be wearing to achieve what I need done in the Spirit. Praise the Lord. How many feel like maybe God's giving you a glimpse of something you've not seen today? Hallelujah. There's another garment that you and I get to wear all the time. You know what it's called? The robe of righteousness the robe of righteousness hallelujah that's that undergarment that's that linen that was underneath the priestess robes the garments that the priest wore hallelujah hallelujah now while this is hot in our spirits, I want you to come stand with me. If you need a prayer partner, you can go in there. But I want you to begin to apply what I've preached to you today in the spirit 
Come on, everybody in this building, the balcony everywhere. If the devil needs to be rebuked, then you need to put on the armor of God. If you need intercession, then you need to ask the Lord to clothe you, hallelujah, with the armor or with the garment of intercession and sackcloth. Come on, let's fill it way up. We got lots of people, so let's get up as close as we can. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. You and I now, when Jesus was getting ready to leave, you know what he said? He said, I am the light of the world. But then he said, I'm leaving. So he said, you are the light of the world. How can that be unless God clothed you and I as he did Lucifer, as he did Adam, as he did Christ, as he did the church, and as he does me and you, that we are the light of the world. Now, I want you to raise your hands, and I just want you to just kind of tune in the spirit. God, give your children direction today on what garment to wear, Lord, to see the answers come through. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you are a tither and you are struggling financially, you need to put on the armor of God because this is a thief that you're dealing with. This ain't Jesus. This is a thief. You need to go after him with the armor of God. If your children are not sick, you need to have on the garment of intercession. Hallelujah. If you want to get in the presence of the Lord and have God begin to give you revelation, you need to put off your kingly robes and put on your priesthood garments of linen and come into the presence of God. Now, Lord, I ask you to touch this church. God, around the world, as we loose the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you, God. You know what the scripture says? That even the earth is clothed with a garment. At least three different scriptures bear this out. And it said, there will come a day when God's getting ready to make a new heaven and a new earth that he will fold the earth and the heavens like a garment and set them aside and he is going to put a new garment on the earth where there's never been witchcraft never been homosexuality never been murder never been an antichrist spirit the heavens hallelujah will be alive with his glory why because it's a new garment so raise your hands. I want you to begin to prophesy the fruit of your lips, the prophetic word of the Lord yesterday. Do not be moved by how big your petition is. Hallelujah. God can answer anything that you're asking him to do in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Reach into the heavens. Oh, hallelujah. Go ahead. Reach into the heavens. Listen, you are bowing before the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He has stretched out. He has stretched out the scepter of righteousness, saying, you have access into my presence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, that today, 